Alright guys, welcome to Future Proof. This month we have a very special guest, we have Maxim from Sentiment. And so the format will be a little bit different. Uh, we ask him a whole bunch of questions about having a data science approach to investments. Thank you. I hope you enjoy it. Okay. I mean, look, don't you guys find this refreshing? Don't you find it interesting? I mean, all you see so far on, on Twitter or X is, uh, you know, buy this, buy that. It's all news. It's all noise. There's a lot of noise, right? So this is really a, a data science approach to investing in crypto, right? It's so refreshing, right? Um, and obviously behavioral analytics, like you, you know, human behavior, right? Like uh, how, uh, like what, what Max was talking about earlier. Okay, so let's move on. So, so this one is not so much crypto related, but uh, this is about the founder of Sentiment. So, oh. Maxim, this question let's see. Uh, explores the man behind Sentiment. Now it's, now it's coming. <laughs> <laughs> so the driving force behind sentiment. Uh, can you tell us a little about yourself, please, uh, in terms of how you got involved in crypto uh, and eventually becoming the founder of sentiment? Uh, also, please share with us some of your aspirations for sentiment and some of the driving philosophies of sentiment. I knew it will come. Okay. We're exploring the, <laughs> the human side of uh, human side. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, I must confess, I did not think I will, uh, it will become as big as this. Uh, it was actually never planned. Uh, there was only, there was uh, only, okay, I lived seven years uh, yoga life, teaching yoga. And okay, before this I was a software developer, long time. Then I got tired of it, said, oh, okay, it's not fulfilling, useless. Uh, uh, I was working for IBM, oh, a lot of political games. Why should I do it? Uh, it's like, yep. And say, okay, whatever. Mm. I give up my, or at least uh, for some time, I said, okay, a few years, I will take off software developer career and I will just do something else. What can I do? Oh, let's do yoga and meditation. Sounds very cool. And it was indeed cool. So it took me not a few years, like seven or eight years. I decided, okay, why should I do it? And it motivated me to finally learn German language very well because I came to Germany, didn't speak yet so much. In IBM, you don't need to speak German. So <laughs> after seven years there, and I uh, said, okay, maybe this is now my future life. Cool, I can teach yoga. I was teaching it uh, quite frequently. And uh, then it happens in my life. Like, I don't know, every seven or 10 years, life changed. Nope. <laughs> Now it's time to do something else. Why don't you, uh, you used to be a uh, software developer, now you understand human psychology, because you learn it in uh, yoga a lot about yourself, you understand everyone's the same, uh, same feelings, same, same struggles. Combine it and uh, go out, see what's going on, and they go out, see what's going on. Oh, there was a Bitcoin in Ethereum, very interesting. And, uh, uh, you know, in a yoga life you like, live uh, uh, very supportive in the community. You do everything you need to do. You get everything you need for your life. And then suddenly, uh, with Ethereum and the, the, the pitch at the time, uh, world computer building communities, DAOs, which we defined our goals, and we have uh, ownership in what we do. Say, so, oh, wow, this is what I want to do. I am um, probably I can still do it. And I initially was even programming a little bit. Uh, but it led me to the direction of uh, market analysis because I've been passionate about it a very long time, maybe 15 years. I'd like to do it uh, in already in 2007 when I uh, wow. entered shortly before the crash. <laughs> yes. Uh, I even earned a little bit on some shots, mm, but it was very little. And uh, I decided, okay, why don't I invest in Ethereum? I think I understand the market. And you, you saw the, the way how, yeah, I had this experience, yeah. Whoa, whoa it's very interesting. <laughs> it's not what I expected from investment. Let me investigate it a bit more. I must be not the only one who is doing this way. 
you invest some money, you enjoy the pump, and then you try and dump, say, wait a second, it's <laughs> very interesting. So I started researching, applying my knowledge, and then understanding uh, behavior patterns, and just went very fast. Start writing some blogs, and people say, yeah, cool, you, you explained so nicely, and you, did, you predict the market, I don't know if I predict it, and developed very fast, and the moment I went to Ethereum conference in Shanghai, uh, 2016, it's like, you go in the flow, it just push you. It's really at that time was very, relatively small community and many excited people. Uh, later on there were a lot of, okay, not so honest with intentions, but at that time I met so many exciting people and they just motivate each other, let's do this, let's do that. And they suddenly after one year end up, oh, now I have a company to run. Okay, very interesting. <laughs> and uh, yeah, came naturally and uh, not exactly what I wanted, uh, but then uh, now I'm joined because I do what uh, I like to do and there's a lot of smart people around. Quite cool. Cool. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks, for, thanks for sharing that. Okay. Uh, no, no questions online yet. Um, the next question I have, right? Um, so that... And, and this was probably partially answered. Um, there are so many sentiment and on-chain metrics uh, on the sentiment platform. Um, what are the top five that you would recommend to a beginner to start yeah, looking into? Yeah, it's a good to do summary. Yeah. So uh, long-term mean dollar invested age, for sure, and uh, MBRV. There are a few of them, but just MBRV, let's say 180 day. Always good. You look at this tool, you start understanding cycles. Then the moment you understand, oh, there are cycles and it can be depicted, you start looking for metrics which can help you to identify the tops. Without the skill, when to sell and convincing yourself to sell, there is no chance to survive, like literally zero chance. So you start to look in the metrics which can help you with predicting the tops. Uh, Delictive addresses, network growth, uh, mm, and this patterns with who is buying small or big. So this will be my top five. Cool. Thanks. Thanks for sharing. So I hope you guys are taking notes. Yeah, <laughs> this is invaluable information. Mm. Um, the okay. social metrics are very important, but there oh. you really need to uh, some sparring partner to understand how it works. It's a it's a little bit a little bit like a magic. Uh, this one, of course, it, the moment you see how it works, it's, it feels like a magic, but it can be standardized using social data a little bit like a magic. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, look, I, I, I use sentiment uh, personally myself, and, uh, and and Maxim mentioned MVRV. That one is one of my, my favorite uh, mm -hmm. metrics to look at. But obviously, that's not the only metric you would look at. Yeah. You, you have to combine it with, with different ones. And then uh, sometimes I get it right, sometimes I don't get it right. Um, and me, and me too. <laughs> and it's about, well, I, I guess as long as you get it right more times than you get it wrong, yep. then, then you're okay. Um, and, and also, it, it is about honing that skill, right? Like yep. you, you're going to keep working at it, keep working at it, and, and hopefully you get it right more times than, than, than not. Um, so the next question, many years in the crypto industry, and when I say many years, like one year is equivalent to like seven you know, this stocks, right? you know this meme, <laughs> yeah. I'm 25 years old and life in crypto is so easy and this is so great. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, that's right. Yeah. Um, so in your many years in, 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 in the crypto industry, uh, what are the three main observations that you have seen uh, and can you share some of your insights, please? Wow, that's a deep question. Oh. <laughs> three main observations. Yeah, uh, three main insights uh, from your observation. Ah, uh, three main insights. In, yeah. Okay, the, the, the number first, it's, <coughs> it's always uh, about uh, what comes up or will come down. It's a number first. Yeah, it's, it's like, and it doesn't harm to repeat yourself <laughs> when you look in your profits. <laughs> it will come down one day. Mm. <laughs> what are you about? <laughs> so it's number one. And, uh, and, uh, and the second is that uh, uh, people striving for publicity popularity, likes, uh, they will never give good advice. Their goal is uh, followership. Followership, it's a crowd, and crowd is typically not very smart. Every single in crowd can be smart, but once we're all together and agreeing something, somehow we become stupid, I don't know. <laughs> so, <laughs> so it's better we have always, uh, we agree on something, but uh, you think, but? 
and you have a little bit uh, your personality. So uh, what goes up will go down. Very public and noisy people, they most of the time have their own, let's say, agenda or wrong, doesn't matter. And, uh, and number three, it's never too late. Doesn't matter. Uh, the moment you start, uh, and never too late to do what? To invest in your learning and education. Because this, is will, this will stay with you. Money can come and go, it can happen, whatever. Maybe it can get even stolen, yeah? Or many things can happen. You deposit to exchange and then, you know, FTX happens, yeah? Yeah. So it's, uh, is it your fault? I don't know, not really. Uh, and, uh, but your knowledge will stay. So you will be able, like Phoenix, you can emerge. The more knowledge and understanding uh, persistence you have, so, yeah, what up, down, don't listen too much to uh, very noisy people and invest in your understanding, education. Thank you, Max. That's that's very, uh, very, very insightful. Um, and, and especially with the, that, that last one, right, that, that really resonates with me, like invest in yourself, oh, right? Because yeah. right? it's a skill that no one can take away from you. And, and when you have that skill, yeah, okay, you've lost some money. Well, you'll make it back somehow, right? Because you, you know, you have that skill. You've got that confidence that you can, yes. you can do it. Um, and uh, and and at at Equity Tracker, that's something that we do quite a lot of. We do a lot of education because mm -hmm. uh, we we feel that that's very important. Um, so that was the three main insights. Okay, I've got a few more questions. <laughs> <laughs> you okay, Maxim? Oh yes, <laughs> yes. Okay. Uh, I think I mentioned, uh, well, you shared a bit of this um, earlier, but um, so we all, uh, we, know that we all know now that you are a yoga instructor as well, or were a yoga instructor, but you, you still obviously practice and you still uh, instruct a bit. Um, do you think yoga has helped you, cal have, has helped calm you down many times, um, especially in a super fast paced industry like crypto? Uh, you know, crypt crypto has no holidays, you know, 24-7, um, 365. Crypto doesn't sleep. It doesn't sleep. When the <laughs> West goes to bed, the East wakes up, <laughs> right? Yes. And then the cycle happens again. Um, what advice do you have for new crypto traders coming into this space, for example, from stocks? Okay, but it's sort of like, uh, two questions. So you want to combine them? Uh, well, you can answer it however okay. you want to. Yeah. Well, first, definitely helped and keep helping. And it's, uh, I'm not insisting the yoga is the only way. Uh, it does help to me, someone else. I know in our team, uh, there are people doing different things. Yep. And uh, they're obviously smart and balanced and also very focused. So for me, it works uh, the best way. Uh, and uh, it has some additional uh, qualities which I think could benefit anyone. It's uh, non-religious, which is uh, good when you deal with uh, um, mental, emotional things. So you don't feel belong to any religi uh, religion, which is uh, uh, accepted by most people. And it does give you more understanding about uh, your physical body, your emotional body, your mental, you know, your intentions in life, which is good. And of course, uh, every time you do yoga or meditate, uh, your mind relax. Or every, almost every time. Sometimes it's so pressure heavy, you need a few sessions. <laughs> uh, and it's good. Uh, the tensions is uh, the only thing. So if, we're ten if we're very tensed, uh, we cannot see things clearly. Uh, and uh, the problems start coming when we're tensed. When we flow as the water, then it goes smoothly, more or less the life. In uh, yeah, in this sense, which I think yoga helps me. And um, mm, if uh, what was the second question? Second question was uh, so because crypto is twenty four seven three sixty five. Mm. Um, the difference between the well, what, what advice would you give uh, a, a newcomer in the crypto? Because obviously. Uh, if you're a trader, especially if you're a short-term trader, uh, you, you'll be glued to your screen the whole time. Uh, mm. and, and it's non-stop, right? You, you probably don't sleep a lot. So what advice would you have for a, a newcomer, say from a, you know, someone who trades in stocks, and then now they're coming into crypto to start trading? What, what sort of advice would you 
an, an orthodox advice. An orthodox advice. Do it to the limit. Invest 1,000, use leverage. And uh, you will experience very fast what you will experience anyway. And if you're smart, you will learn your lesson. <laughs> so you will start taking breaks. <laughs> and it's a, a fast way. Uh, but doesn't have to be this way. Uh, this uh, uh, lesson can be learned from uh, observing others, if you read stories uh, or YouTube videos, uh, how other people uh, behave and burn. Um, then the advice would be there are always opportunities in crypto market, even in bear market. Mm, this is a kind of unique uh, because in the bear market, uh, in every single one I've been through, so the third one, there is always emerging new topic. Yeah, and you will notice it, oh, 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 so I can play here. The whole market is crashing, I can still play here. And nowadays even you can play short, which I don't recommend, <laughs> but uh, you can try to do it. <laughs> and uh, it means uh, that uh, uh, it there is no single reason to push yourself to achieve results now. Uh, market. 24-7, every day, for whole day. It never goes away from you. There will be always opportunities. So you need to wait for your time. Either educate, or if you're already educated, you know, I just wait, wait, wait. I've been practicing this skill for the whole last year. Like, there is nothing to do. Unless I try to play short, which, but I don't recommend, so I don't do it myself. What can you do? Small amounts here and there, yeah, you can, but really small, it's less than 1% of your total uh, holdings because you know it doesn't feel right the market so you wait wait and wait so this patience and convince uh, um, you're being convinced uh, uh, there will always be opportunities yeah and you can play small amounts if uh, like in my case i cannot go away completely so you need to sharpen your skills so you keep playing small things yeah. cool thanks yeah. So I've got two more questions, two, three more questions, and then we'll, we'll probably close it, yeah. <laughs> um, no worries. Okay, so many people believe that, that uh, crypto markets are manipulated, yeah? Um, mm. uh, and, uh, well, I mean, if you look at traditional markets, uh, to be honest, the crypto markets with on-chain analytics uh, tools like yours, uh, it, makes, it makes crypto markets even more transparent than, than TradFi, than, you know, than traditional markets. But... Um, the question is, if you know, um, many believe that that crypto markets are manipulated, uh, can tools like Sentiment, with uh, the ability to look at on-chain data, uh, can that help identify uh, when uh, things are being manipulated? For example, can I give one more unorthodox answer? Sure. Okay, N it's not about tools and data. As they can, but if there is a, uh, some little bit wrong switch in our head that um, prevent us from using it properly, no tools or data can help. And there's a little bit switch, uh, crypto market to extreme, like multiply 10, is a very harsh area. So if we go there with expectation, oh, there are manipulators, of course there are. There are, uh, but it's not manipulators, it's a sharks. It's a very skilled, professional, ruthless sharks. They don't care about your feelings, your portfolio. The only goal is maximize the profits on every level, on exchange, on market makers, uh, MAV. Uh, whenever you look, they're everywhere. Mm -hmm. yeah? They will tell you a lot of nice stories and use it as your exit liquidity. So what do you do? Are they manipulators or you accept? Yeah, this is a pond which is filled with sharks, and I'm here, there. So the moment you have this attitude, now you can use the data. Because, okay, I'm a small fish, I need to survive. Uh, I don't uh, call out and say, hey, there are so many, it doesn't help me. Yeah. Uh, if I lose, okay, I take as a lesson, and I c repeat again. Yeah. Then to also data will help. Because you need to keep your uh, mental or emotional level strong. Yeah. The moment you start blaming others, you're losing. Yeah? Your power goes down. You blame someone else. You take uh, responsibility. Or let's say you don't use it as a chance to uh, get to the next level or to the next stage. 
your power goes down. So don't lose the power. Whatever they're doing, yeah, they're ruthless. <laughs> uh, need to take it from day one. They will always be like this around. Thank you. Thank you for sharing your insights. Um, you know, on, on, on that note, um, I, you know, I, I guess, uh, no, no, I guess the, the, the same happens in traditional markets as well, right? I mean, they, 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 they are out there and they are professional. They have professional tools mm. uh, for, uh, and, and they plan. They don't just buy something or sell something because their friend's gardener told them to, right? Or the taxi driver or the grab driver on the way to wherever you're going to say, hey, you know, you have to look into this and buy that. You, 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 you don't do that, right? You, there's a lot of planning, there's a lot of research, there's a lot of analysis that happens and, and before they, they execute their plan, whatever their plan is. Uh, so if you just go in blind, um, then more than likely, you will lose your money. Yep. Uh, yeah. Sooner or later. Yeah, sir? Sooner or later, yeah, sooner in, or later in crypto yeah. sooner. Yeah, 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 a lot faster. <laughs> because it's 24-7. Yeah, that's right. It happens faster. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, look, I, I, I think uh, we're, we're, we're at the end of the session. Um, actually, wait, th is there one question? Okay, there's one question. I'm just going to read it out. Is there a correlation uh, between crypto cycles, the U.S. stock, Forex, com and commodities? Yes. It's uh, <coughs> the whole economy, uh, it's, it's a one. It's a one uh, and it's uh, connected uh, uh, from 2012 onwards for, I think for professional and then more and more player became clear uh, what is the approach of central banks and governments with pumping liquidity. So everything generally went up uh, it's just crypto went up uh, on, uh, on steroids, up and down, up and down, up and down. So it's, uh, crypto is much faster, but if you remove the steroids part, everything went up. Now, what we have lately, everything crashed down. So it's a kind of related. And then, uh, of course, uh, because of the cycles, um, sometimes it's commodity preferred, and then money goes there, and then all the, now it's in the bonds and uh, treasuries, so the money pulled out from the market and they stay there. So the stocks and crypto crashes. It is in, uh, it's interconnected. Mm, I'm not professional enough uh, to build uh, I don't know, the whole picture in one beautiful chart, but I see from the data observed it's definitely interconnected. Yeah, it's, uh, especially now, it was uh, maybe five years ago, crypto was living its own life. Oh, now, no, the same players. Uh, after JP Morgan and Goldman Sachs or whatever you call them enter the game, you never know what they're doing background, but you must <laughs> expect they're trying to maximize their profits and they're playing this game, so it will be now even more interconnected. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. In, in fact, uh, in Singapore in Token 2049, mm. we had the CEO of Franklin Templeton on stage. Mm. Uh, now, Franklin Templeton uh, has 1.5 trillion in uh, assets under management. Uh, they're starting to, I mean, if they're officially looking into this, uh, you're pretty sure that they've been researching this for the last few years, and those those guys who have been researching have probably been, have their own money in it before before that, right? So, yeah. But you know, do you know they are customers? Sorry? Frank and Pepper don't have customers. They're, they're your customers? Yes, they are, but they keep it like you, we don't really know what they using it for? Yeah. We try to give them education. Maybe you want. Of course, we wanted to increase our invoice. Yeah, 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 Obvious, of yeah. yeah. As a company, uh, but also we wanted to really. It's interesting. To, uh, not so many customers like this exist. Yeah, frankly, well, we have also Coinbase or, or Ripple. We have quite a few customers. It's always interesting to talk with them uh, directly yeah. to learn also yeah. how they think. Uh, yeah. What do they expect? Yeah, but they're quite uh, restrictive. They're not <laughs> sharing too much. <laughs> no, but they ask questions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and uh, they're learning quite fast. Yeah. Uh, yeah, well, yeah. they started. Was very interesting. They started very. You see, they were thinking or trying to analyze the market. Very traditional stocks, and uh, the first things we say, ah, maybe you look here and there. It looks different. And uh, it's the first time we tried to educate. It was about this, but they learn. They're, uh, they're learning fast. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I actually that uh, you know that that leads me to um, th th there was a slide that you had, Maxim, mm -hmm. on um, 
uh, where you're looking at the sharks and the small whales. Yes. Where where, where the shrimp, sharks and shrimps. the small whales, <laughs> and, uh, yeah, that's right, keep dumping to the shrimps, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, the, the same happens in traditional markets, yeah. right? Because we, we track the institutional investors and we look at the retail investors. Every time the institutional investors buy, the retail investors sell. <laughs> Every time the, the retail investors buy, the institutional investors uh, will we'll dump on them. So the, it, 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 the same happens in crypto, the same happens in traditional markets. Now look. Yeah, it's, it's quite... It seems like a pattern. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it seems like a pattern, right? So if you're a shrimp, uh, I guess educate yourself, right? Educate yourself, yeah. figure out how, how these, um, uh, these big boys or the whales and the sharks do it and yeah. try to pretend to be one and think like one. At least think like one. Yeah, yeah think like one. Okay. Uh, yeah, we've got okay. One last question, and then I will. Uh, yeah. Um, since you started Sentiment many years ago, there have been a lot of other data providers in that enter the space and track the crypto market. Um, from your perspective, what differentiates um, Sentiment from these other players like you know Dune and so on? What is the I mean, what would be your, I, I know this, this might seem a bit confidential, but is there anything that you highlight when you talk to potential clients or that they're trying to like, you know, struggling to compare between one platform mm, and mm. another? That's a good question. Thanks. And not confidential at all. Uh, on, uh, uh, in one way, you can always differentiate projects by their founders. So if you know, I know their founders, and we are different uh, in uh, our where we're coming from, where our strong point. So you will see, you can see or predict where it will develop, as long as the founders lead in the company. So in uh, June, nonsense, Glassnode, us, Missari, I can go into saying difference where strong uh, and uh, not so strong points are, uh, and uh, then I will have. Well, I will be honest. But it will take a little bit longer time. Mm. Uh, the shorter version would be um, okay. I will say then strong and probably weak points of us. Okay, this will be fair. So the strong point will be because I always look in the actually not only marking whole life or, uh, always holistically. It's never split it. Uh, let's say in the markets never only on chain for me. I always will look on chain, social, dev activity, price, everything myself. And we build platform like this. You have to do whatever you do in the market or in life, you need to understand the whole picture. It's like never it's never one sided story. Even in normal life. If something bad, well, there's a very reason and maybe it will become good. So you, you always try to understand the whole picture. It will always be strong sign of our platform. Whenever we develop any new metrics or new protocol or some small feature product, I uh, keep pushing, how can we understand the whole things? The first thing, the whole market. If you don't understand the whole market, uh, the details might be not so helpful too. And the second, it's on-chain, social, dev activity, pricing, clustering of the data. It will be always our strong side. I think none of competitors uh, take it as a mission. It's difficult. Our team is 54 people and sometimes they complain we have don't have enough big data, oh, it's uh, complicated. Uh, but it also means at the same time it's uh, a bit uh, a weak side, actually it could be sometimes uh, painful for me as a weak side. If you don't focus just on the chain, and like in the case of uh, later, like Arkham, not only on chain, but on not only on labeling, but the labeling specific addresses, wow, you can be very good in it, like really good. And I know competitors and sometimes very good there was a time glass note, maybe still are uh, very good in Bitcoin related metrics, plenty of them and very nicely designed and visualized. Uh, they can do it because there's been long time they didn't do anything else. Just Bitcoin metrics. Then they added RC20, uh, but not all of them, only a small part because it's difficult. It's very expensive. It's uh, your system is crashing. <laughs> your servers are growing. Oh, it's a, it's a nightmare for engineers. Uh, so if they, whatever they do, specific areas, they do very well. And maybe in every angle where what they're doing we could be not as good as they are, but if you combine everything, so you can come to sentiment and build your whole overview picture. Yeah, so it's uh, good and 
a bit weaker side. Cool. Thanks for the last question. Um, I think we'll end the session here tonight. Thank you so much all for coming. Uh, but before I end it, any closing thoughts, uh, Maxim? Thanks for inviting. It was a great pleasure uh, to feel we spent quite some time also before you came to us. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's and right. uh, I really enjoyed the questions and uh, your attention and focus. Uh, I'm quite confident uh, many of you will do better results in the future.